So here on our document, it's going to tell us where are we going to get points from. The first one is respond to the prompt with a historically defensible thesis or claim that establishes a line of reasoning. Have we done this skill yet? Have I talked to you about thesis writing yet? No, but a lot of you are thinking about English, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to talk about thesis. This will be a skill that we are going to learn today. We have not learned this in class. Let's look at the next one. Have, when we looked at documents, have we ever described the broader history? Yes. yes. So guess what? We've done that skill. Okay? So we're good. We, we have one that we haven't, one that we have. Let's look at the next one. This one says support an argument in response to the prompt using at least six documents. Have we looked at documents and put them in our own words? Yes. If you do this on the AP test, it says six. You get one point for doing it right for three documents. And when you do it for the other three documents, you get the second point. So looking at this, we've done this point, we've done this point. What haven't we done? The thesis, right? But all semester, we've been looking at those sheets, right, where we summarize in our war own words, historical information, intended audience, point of view, and purpose. We have been doing this all of along. So now all we're doing is going to be able to put these documents together to make a defensible claim. The next thing, use at least one additional piece of specific historical evidence beyond found in the documents relevant to the prompt. When we read the documents, haven't we talked about the history beyond the doc? Yes. Great, we've done that point. We should be used to this one. Next one, for at least three of the documents, explain how or why the documents, point of view, purpose, historical situation, and or audience is relevant to the argument. Haven't we done that? Yes. It's not asking you to do all four. Okay, it's only asking you to do one. So the way the sentence should have been written, I know they have commas here, right? This should have been written for at least three of the documents explains how or why the document's point of view or purpose or historical situation and then or audience so this when there's or there does that mean you have to do them all yeah. no you only have to do one but that's not grammatically correct right your english teacher would be like why do you have all those ors there those are just commas right okay and it makes you sound like a seal if you had or 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 there right <laughs> uh, okay last thing is use evidence to cooperate do y'all know what it means to cooperate okay so Cooperate. Um, Jaden just went to the counselors. How many of us in the room saw the counselor call for Jaden? Yes? So we could corroborate a story that Jaden went where? To the counselors. Can I go down to the counselor's office and see where Jaden signed in? Yes. Can I even talk to Miss Schmidt and ask her, was Jaden here? Because all of a sudden the cops come to us saying Jaden committed a crime. Is there enough of us in here to cooperate that he was in our class? He got called down to go to the counselors. He was with Miss Schmidt, and then he came back. Could we all cooperate that story? Yes. Yeah, so we have now an alibi for him. Do you get what cooperate means? All right, let's look at the next one. Qualify. Qualify. Qualify is when we look at the degree. Um, Jaden is a power lifter. I'm just going to pick on you today. Jaden is a power lifter. How many of you would qualify that he's like the greatest power lifter? What do we have to see to qualify him? Him in his own personal opinion, he says, I qualify as the greatest power lifter ever. But he has some bias, right? Because that is him. What is a, what would we use as qualifying measures to say that he's a great power lifter? Uh, proof? What other people say? Maybe some coaches? Would you go to coaches or his friends? Coaches. coaches, what else could we use to qualify that he's a great power lifter? Oh, the amount of weights for his class. Do y'all get cooperate? Do y'all get qualify? Now let's look at this last word, modify. Well, Jaden is a good power lifter, but however, I have to look at Glenn. Glenn is a far superior power lifter because he actually gets lower in his squat. He actually, I don't know what, I'm just making up stuff. He, he looks great in his glasses and um, his, 
biceps are bigger. Ooh. Okay? Ooh. Okay. Ooh. Have I just given some, have I modified my argument? Yes. I said, although Jaden has probably come in second in the state, I actually have to modify this, saying that Glenn is more dedicated of a power lifter. Okay. Do you get what modify is? Yes. Do we get each one of these words? Okay. Cooperate means what? We bring them all together to what? Agree. Form an alibi. What does uh, modify mean? Although, however, it may be deceiving, right? What is qualify? Put in some qualifications, right? Like you'll understand each one of those words. Have we done this one? To qualify, cooperate, sometimes, right? Okay, so really, I'm looking at a thesis is on my only new thing, and actually us putting all the documents together. So I want you to take out a highlighter, because we're gonna look at our question. Highlighters, highlighters, pass one out. Pass another. Okay, Shh. what we are going to do right now is we're going to look at our question. And the reason why I've given you a highlighter is I want you to highlight words after we talk about them of what I should probably have in my thesis. Because if you don't have any of these words in your thesis, you are probably not what? Answering the question. And you're not gonna do good. You're not answering the prompt. So let's read the question. Evaluate the extent to which the experience of the First World War changed the relationships between Europeans and its colonized people. So what are some words that I have to have definitely in my thesis? Relationships between. Right, extent is what I'm doing, right? That's what I'm gonna qualify, modify, right? Evaluate. Okay, evaluate is what I'm qualifying and modifying. So do I need to do that? This is my job. I need to evaluate the extent, that's my job. Should I repeat my job in there? No. This is exactly what it's asking me. They said, Ms. Verdeen, as you write this, you need to evaluate and tell me the extent. Okay, so eventually I have to have a verbiage, right? That describes that. Okay, to a great extent, to a non-existent extent, to a mediocre extent. I'm qualifying now, right? What are some words I have to have in my thesis? First World War, that would be a good word. I'm responding to the prompt. I need to have Europeans. Okay, I need to, this is what I'm questioning, right? Did their relationship change? Question, right? Hmm. I need to have colonized people. So if I had Europeans, colonized people, and I talked about the change, that's what I'm really doing, right? So I want you to think about this time period before the first world. So here's World War I. What is the time period before World War I? We were just in it. It was the last part of our test. Industrialization and imperialism. In imperialism, I want you to tell me, how did the Europeans look at their colonies? What was their sole purpose? Raw materials. Raw materials. So in imperialism, the colonies were important for raw materials. Okay, how were the Europeans able to dominate their colonies? Did they say, just give me your stuff? No, they took over. They took over by what? Weapons. Weapons, what else? Uh, There's some ideas. Disease. Not disease, the Africans were immune to them. What ideas did they have in their head saying that we can go? Oh, uh, social Darwinism. Social Darwinism. So they were able to take over the colonies because of ideas like social Darwinism, what else? Oh, it's so heavy. It's so heavy. It's so heavy. And it's oh, a color. What's the word? That would not be good at charades. I thought you were actually paying. I thought you were actually paying. I was like, oh no, there should be no more babies coming out of you. 
Okay. So now, do I have something that tells me how they were before? Because I need to qualify what change in their relationships, right? Prior to this time period, the Europeans looked at their colonies for raw materials, and they were able to do this because they had the notions of social Darwinism, white men's burden, and they also had things called what? Guns, Guns weapons, right? Industrialized stuff. They were superior. So what I'm looking for in these documents about World War I is what change happened in the world. What change happened here? So what we're going to do is I know when I write a, my thesis, I'm going to have to talk about the change, but my job is tell me what extent. What extent did this change? Was it the same extent? Was it a different extent? Explain that out. And I need to look at this relationship between European and colonized people. Are we ready to go into the first document? Now that I understand my question, do I now know what I'm looking for in my document? So I'm going to read this first document. This guy, his name is John, and I can't say his last name, Chilin and Buim something. And he's the native of British Nassau land, Maui. Okay, so he's a Baptist minister. Would this guy have been imported in colonization, in imperialism? Yes, right? He was the, the, the communicator between the Europeans and the colonists. Okay, let's look at the document because my first job is to be able to put this document in my own words. So we're going to take it line by line like we've done. We have been invited to shed our innocent blood in this world war, which is now in progress. Okay, so what does that mean? He's again. Well, you're, you're reading the point of view that he's against, but if I were to put that sentence in my own words, what would I say? The British have asked the people to join the war. Okay, so the British have asked its colonies to what? Join, join the war. So is it using them for raw materials anymore? No. So what is the change here? They're using them for what? Men. Troops, right? Is, would men be okay? Yeah. Yes, but what sounds better when you're writing a paper? Men or troops? Yeah. Troops, okay? So we know by this first sentence, they are using them for troops. You've been on it, babe. get off. Okay? In the past, okay, what was the past? Hmm, what do we say was the past? Imperialism. Imperialism. In the past, it was said indirectly that Africa had nothing to do with the civilized world. Okay, so in the past, in imperialism, what have the Africans been told? They're not important. Okay, remember we had four classes of people? We, what were our four classes of people? Uh, the Europeans, the Asian, Asians, African, Africans, African, and Native, Native Americans. Americans. Who was the superior one? Europe. Okay, what was it said about Africans? Oh, they're, dumb and lazy. they're dumb, lazy, savage, right? And he's referring to this. He's saying... Prior to this period, I was told social Darwinism and white man's burden. I'm savage. I'm uncivilized. Oh gosh, is this guy, is this guy like for the war or against the war? Against. against. Okay, so he's saying, look, so y'all said the first sentence, they're asking them for troops. And this guy is rebuttaling. He's like, why send us, why are we sending you troops when we have been told we are what? Dumb. Dumb. Okay, so let's go to the, y'all are upset already. Let's go to the next line. But now we find that poor African has been plagued, plunged into this great war. So did they have a say? No. The Europeans want what for them? Troops. They're troops. The masses of our people are ready to put on uniforms, ignorant of what they have to face or why they have to face it. So what are they ignorant of? So let's think historically. What are they ignorant of that is going on in this war? What's going on? What's going on in this war that they're ignorant of? The war is fight. It's going on. What are these people in Africa don't know about the war? Oh, machine. machine. Well, they see machine guns, but what has it led to? Yeah. Trench warfare. The stalemate. Are they ignorant of that? Yes. They don't yes. know. They don't know.
know how bad the war is, because tell me what else the government is doing with the newspapers. They're hiding everything about the war. Oh, hey, was that even in the document? So all of this stuff about the trenches, they're censoring it, there's not newspapers going out there. Where can I put that? Situation, intended audience, purpose, or point of view? Uh, situation. Situation. So I could put trench warfare they're ignorant of. They're ignorant of because they know how to read, but what's just not getting to them? What's really happening because the government is doing what with the newspapers? Censorship. Censorship. So I haven't even gotten like through this document, but there's a lot of things we already know. Let's keep on going. We natives have been loyal since the commencement of this British government. In all departments of Nal Nalasa land, the welfare of the British would have been incomplete without our loyalty. So this land, they are what to Britain? Loyal. That's what that sentence says. He says, but in the time of peace, the government had failed to help the underdog. In time of peace, everything was for Europeans only. So in time of peace, what time period is he referring to? Industrial. Imperialism and industrialization, that everything was for them. Because what were they doing in their country? Taking out what? The resources. Did they care about the Africans? Did they care about what they were doing there? No, it was all for them, right? But in time of war, it has been found that we are needed to share the hardship and to shed our blood equally. They're saying, look, we need you in this war. We need you to shed your blood. Okay. So, do you think they're going around saying, and I'm just going to put you right here. Oh, do you think they're going to go around toting white man's burden, social Darwinism, saying that the Africans in Africa and this little group of NASA land are lesser? No. What do you think they're going to start telling these soldiers? You're valuable. You're valuable. Oh my gosh, you have great marksmanship. Man, you could run fast. Do you realize that you could coordinate people really well? Do you realize that you have a really, really good sniper's eye? Have they changed their tone about how they talk to Africans? Yes. Yes. They need them to be good. They need them to be good, but what were they telling them in imperialism? Oh, you were inferior. You were the lesser of the people. You were savages. In the political cartoons we saw, how were they portrayed? They were depicted as the savage people groups. Do you think they're going to depict them that way? No. No. They're going to depict them as heroes. They're going to depict them with great... Okay. Has the tone of what they're doing changed? Oh, yeah. Okay, so let's keep on going. So they said, let's share in this blood equally. The poor Africans who have nothing to win in this present world world are invited to die for a cause which is not theirs. Gosh, this guy's deep, right? You're like, yeah, John. Yeah, John. <laughs> Whatever your African name is. Okay. Do y'all like that? Sorry, you said it right. Okay. Trevor Noah would be very upset with me. Okay, so do we have the first thing? What is the name of this is document? It's John Chilimbewe. Okay, he is talking about, he's a Baptist minister. We've kind of worded it, right? We've kind of gone line by line and said it. Do we need to go again, or have y'all been writing as we've gone? We've been writing. Okay, so historical situation. What did we say was the historical situation? The trenches. What else is a historical it's situation? World War I. We have imperialism, social Darwinism. It was before the time, but does that set up the situation? Yes. Yeah, it's why they're changing their tone to saying, what are Africans? Are they lesser? They're amazing. They're amazing. They are equals in society to us. Their blood is the same co color as our blood, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Are they doing this for selfish reasons? I want us to be critical now. Yes. 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 Prior to this, they were telling them they were lesser just to get all their resources. Mm -hmm. Now this time they're telling them, man, y'all are great troops. Wait, are they using them here? Are they using them here? How do you think the Africans are going to feel when they read John's narrative? They're not going to want to go to war. They're not going to want to go to war. Okay, so let's go through this. We know the historical situation. Who do you think the intended audience is? The people. Africans of what nation? Uh, so Nasa Lalin, hey. Hey, who would it be? Would it who would it be? Who do you men who are what? 
60 that are going into war. So now I have an audience. What is his purpose? What is he trying to do? Is he saying this war is great? No, what is he trying to do? Change your mind on not encourage, encourage them not to what? To enlist. Not to enlist. Because are they using us? Mm -hmm. Okay? What is his point of view? No war. No war. He doesn't want to go to this war. He's anti this war. So has it really changed? Here they were using them, and y'all said here they are using them. Is it the same? In imperialism, they were used for their resources. In World War I, they are used for their troops, their manpower. I want us to think after the war. How are they going to look at this stuff? We are being used. We are being used. We are being debased. They are killing our men. They are going to revolt. And this is going to lead to what happening in Africa. All of the colonies being... Um, they rebel yeah. and... Ask for independence. Now I'm going back to my question. <coughs> to what extent did the experiences in the First World War change relationships between Europeans and his colonies people? Is there change? <laughs> yes. The Europeans, however, did they really change? No. no, they used them for their raw materials. And during the war, they used them for their... No. Their troops... And now this is going to cause what amongst people like John Chilimbue? Resentment or love? Resentment. Which is going to cause what for them to change after the war? Rebellion. Have I evaluated an extent? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, now let's cooperate with other documents. Okay, is this social, this document? Yes. yes. Yeah. Is this political? Yes. What he's gonna, what is gonna result to the war is the political. Is this the interaction between humans? Yes. yes. Yeah. Is this cultural? Yes. Yeah, because they were told that they were lesser and the Europeans were superior. Is this economic? Mm. Eh. Mm. Okay. Not really. Not, well, the raw materials, but that was outside information, right? Okay. So we're used to this format, right? Can you now do the documents in your own words? We've been doing this all semester. Can you do the hip analysis? Guess what? We've been doing this all semester, and now we need to go through the rest of the documents to figure out where our essay is going. Let's look at Dom, document two, and then this is another name that's going to kill me. Can y'all say it? Gosh, my time in Plano was like this. I was like, I should, but I don't. Okay, so this source, I need to look at it and figure out how the relationships are changing. This is an Indian officer, and he is in the British Indian Army, and he was fighting against the Ottoman Army, so the war went outside of Europe. We're in Turkey in this area, and we know he is fighting in um, Iraq, and he's writing a letter to his friend in India in October of 1915. This later was intercepted by the British mail censors, and was not delivered. Why do you think it wasn't delivered? Because we actually talked about the war. Uh, was it positive about the war or negative? Negative. Okay, so we know some things. So let's look at this. England is the educator. The patriotism that the English have taught us, the patriotism that all civilized nations have celebrated, the patriotism is responsible for all this bloodshed. So what is he saying caused the war? Patriotism. Wasn't that what we saw as one of the causes? which was called nationalism. He's saying World War I was started by nationalism, pride in one's nation. Okay, so that's, we, we are summarizing in our own words, right? Because are we allowed to quote? Mm -hmm. So he says nationalism has started World War I. Is that now in my own words? He says we see now that all patriotism means is snatching away another man's country. Oh, what is he referring to? Patriotism means Snatching away another man's country. What is he referring to? Imperialism. Imperialism. What happened in Africa? The stealing of stuff. Okay. To show patriotism, nationalism, by killing thousands and thousands of people, all to snatch away a bit of land. Well, it's the English who have taught us this. 
Okay, so at the start, he sounded positive. England is an educator. You're like, wow, people who educated, that's positive. But now what he's describing, is it positive? No, no he's saying England has taught us to what? Bad Steal bad things, take away, right? And was this for a benefit of the colonies? No. no. And he says, this has led us into a war that has killed what? No. So do you understand why they did not make it to his friend? Because is he being positive about the war? Or is he being negative? Mm -hmm. So now my point of view is what here? Is anti-war. Anti so let's look at the second paragraph. He says the youths of our country. Why would they, Why is he talking to the youth? Because they're going to get drafted. They're going to get drafted. Is she talking about outside information that these guys are going to be called up into war? Okay, so that situation. Then he says, the youth of our country, seeing this, has started to practice the beautiful form of nationalism. So are the youth buying into this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're buying into this and they're being nationalistic. He says, therefore, the killing of a number of people, the throwing of bombs, they have started to do horrific things. Oh, is he concerned? Mm -hmm. He's saying the educator has set a what? A bad example, and now our youth, what are they doing? The They're following in their footsteps. Tell me what two dominant religions are in India. Hinduism and? Islam. Do they see eye to eye? No, there was a time of peace because there was a guy who went to war at the Battle of Kalinga and says, oh no, way, woe is my ways. Oh, oh, oh. Ashoka. And remember, they've had, oh, oh, you, you're like, okay. Hey, remember that they had peace. And now, is England disturbing that peace that they've had so long between the Muslims and the Hindus? Yes. yes. And so now he says they're throwing bombs, they're doing horrific things. He says, shame on patriotism. As long as this narrow mindedness continues, bloodshed in the name of patriotism will not cease. So, what is he predicting in India? War amongst what two groups? Islam, Islam. Islam and Hinduism. Was Islam and Hinduism even in this document? No. 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 He's saying what is going on in the war is going to affect our nation. He says whether a man throws a bomb from the rooftop or whether 50 men under the orders from their officers start firing at a cannon gun in the front lines, this cause of bloodshed, this madness is the same. So man, this guy, is he for the war? All right, so he's saying this war, he's against it because it's teaching patriotism, which is causing what for the youth to do? Bad things. Bad things, which is causing them to cause strife in their own country. All right? Let's look at this historical situation. What, what does England have anything to do with India? They took it over because what were they producing here? What raw material were they producing in India? It's not silk, that's they China. Calico. No, they they know that they were competing with calicos. There is something that India is producing for export to go to China. Opium. Opium. We saw those opium fields. Remember when I showed you the picture and he had the turban on top? Okay, so the historical situation, I could look that England has exerted its dominance over India because it's using India to produce what? Opium. Opium. And now it's in war, and is it asking for them to produce opium? No, no. It's asking them for what? Troops. Troops. Those troops are learning this, what? Patriotism, and they're going to come home and cause what? Rebe rebellions between what two groups in India? Mm -hmm. Hindus and? Wow, I have a lot of stuff going on historically, which eventually is going to lead to a guy you probably know from India. Gandhi? Gandhi, yeah. Gandhi responds to these people because these people are bringing violence and what is his whole tone? Peace. He's like, peace. 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 peace be with you. Gandhi is responding yeah. to what the British have started amongst the youth. All right? So who do you think the attendant audience of this is? A letter to his friend. His friend. His purpose. To what's going on in the war and what the British are doing, right? His point of view. Anti-war. Anti -war. Category. Is this social? 
Yes, the use amongst each other. Is this political? They're introducing patriotism, which is causing political strife in India. And eventually the precursor to, we know, Gandhi coming in. Is this interaction between humans? Yeah, he's predicting this whole strife between the Muslims and the Hindus. Is this cultural? Yeah, we talked about Ashoka creating that peace. Is this economic? Yeah. Okay, let's look at the next one. It's a picture. Hooray. There's a little bit we have to read on this picture. Okay. So, French postcard showing colonial troops in France and French civilians. In imperialism, will we have ever seen them sitting side by side? No, but we're all what in this war? Equal. Equal. Okay, we see the text of this card says, Our black troops in the Great War, 1914 to 1950. Say, what are we doing here? Question mark, exclamation point, dot, dot, dot. We came to kill savages, dot, dot, dot. Came to kill savages, the German ones too. Is this telling us who our enemy is? Yes. And it's saying Germany is what? But the irony is that this war, what war is the irony here? The, the term savage. Savage. That Germans are savage because if we looked at this word savage in the time period before, who would that word have been used against? Them. Are we seeing stuff that is a nuisance? Yes. Is that now analytical that we're picking out this stuff saying, whoa, wait. We're saying the Germans are savage? Hey, dude, like 50 years before, they were calling you savage. Are y'all now getting to a little bit more of an analytical argument? P picking at this word, because I know y when I read it, some of y'all just eyebrow up. Like, what are they saying? Like, gosh. Okay. Um, let's describe the document. In this document, what do we see? Three soldiers sitting with two civilians. Three soldiers sitting with two civilians, right? Next to each other. That's exactly describing the document. Okay, they're, they're different races. What is the situation? They're just chilling. They're chilling, maybe. He's they're out of the trenches. But that's not the situation. They're smoking and all their stuff. What is the situation that I know? These people have been told what prior to this time period? Social Darwinism. In Social Darwinism, these African Americans have been told that they have been savage. And y'all said the irony now... Is they're calling German, savage, German. German savages, and they are being called what? Yeah. Heroes. They're equal. Why do you think they're calling them equal and sitting side by side? What do these Europeans need them for? I know it sounds bad, their bodies, but they need them for their bodies to be troops, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so are we getting some nuisances and some synthesis and analysis? Mm -hmm. Okay. Intended audience. It's a French postcard. Think about this. Who sends postcards? Are the French people going to send this to other French people? No. They're going to send this to the Africans so they see this. And they, like this guy, he wants to write home to Ma. Right? I'm just making up a, a story. Hey, he wants to write home to Ma, and there's his postcard. He writes it, right? Sends it home. Don't people want to see Africans rising up? Mm -hmm being equal so these postcards are going to go where africa. africa and this is going to do what when these africans get it they're going to be oh, they're like oh so is this propaganda yes. this is propaganda it is there the purpose is propaganda to encourage more africans to do what join the war, join the war. so this point of view oh, some of y'all were like this is ironic right yeah because it is, because they're calling someone else savage when they've been called savage. Yeah. And then before them, it was the Indians. And we see that they're, the irony in this. And so the point of view, if I talk about it from the French perspective, is this a good point of view? Yes, but if I was an African, would I be reading between the lines mm -hmm. and questioning this? <laughs> yeah, like how dare they call me that I'm not savage, but weren't they calling me savage before? Mm -hmm. Right? 
So we're getting to a little bit more complexity. Is this social? Yes. Is this political? Yes. Eventually, what do you think is going to happen when these guys don't come home? Um, and they're not treated equal after this time period. What, what are they going to do? What does that change? They're going to what? Rebel and ask for what? Independence. Is this cultural? Yeah, because what have they been told before this time period? They're savages because of social Darwinism and white man's burden. And, and is this economic? Yeah. That's our weakest category, right? Yeah. So let's look at the next document. Wait. Yeah. Does this process seem familiar? We've been doing this process. I told you we should not be shocked when we get to this DBQ because I've been doing all of this pre-writing all semester. And you should feel comfortable with putting it in your own words, reading between the lines. So now let's look at this next one. Try this name, guys. Hello. Hi, Shelly. Doing good, how are you? I do. I'll write her a pass so she can go to her next class and then go to you first, right? I'll do that. Bye, Shelly. I need to write you a pass in the list so you can see your counselor. But at the end of your period, you're going to go there during the passing periods, and I'll write you a pass for your next class. I don't know. Just go there. Miss Shelley will tell you. She's the secretary. Uh -huh. Yeah, go ahead. All right, let's look at this document. Y'all got the name? Bahari Law. Okay. He is an Indian soldier. So what is a repetitive theme? There, there's Indian that tells us there's African, so it tells us that these are Europeans colonies. And what are they asking of their colonies? To become, to become, soldiers. To become soldiers, join the war. So this is a letter um, from a soldier in the British Indian Army on the Western Front. So where is he at if he's on the Western Front? Uh, uh, no, he's France or Russia? France. 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 He's in France. Okay, his, this is a letter to his family, November 1917. The letter was intercepted by the British mail censors and not delivered. Hmm, why wasn't it delivered? Uh, it's negative, so they probably didn't want it to get out. Okay, so let's look at this document. Let me get to the document. It says, there is no likelihood of our getting rest during the war, in the winter. So what is he talking about this first sentence? They're not going to sleep, right? The story of my life. Mm -hmm. Y'all's life too, right? Yeah. But we're not at war, but this guy is. It says, I am sure that German prisoners would not be worse off if any way than we are. He's talking about prisoners. And is he saying, is their life better or are we just pretty much as equal? Is that bad? Your life is equal to a prisoner? That's pretty darn bad. That's what he's saying. He says, my life is equal to a German prisoner. He says, I had to go three nights without sleep. I feel you, man, right? He's basically, he's concerned about sleep. This is like y'all's story, right? You're talking to a friend. You can relate to this, right? We're all relating to this. He says, I was on a truck. And the Europeans on this truck did not like to sleep next to me because I'm an Indian. Whoa. Which Indian? I thought they were all, now you're bringing up some, some nuisances, right? The Europeans were telling them to go into this war and we were going to be equal in blood. And now this guy, he wants to sleep and he's on a truck and everybody has gone to what side of the truck? The opposite side and he's all by himself. He has more room, right? You're like, yes, he can sprawl yeah, out. Way down. Right. But how does that make you feel that you're in isolation? Lonely. Lonely. Resented. It makes you feel what? Uh, hated. Hated. So what, what, what is probably something prominent amongst these English soldiers? Social about Darwinism. Social Darwinism. Are you bringing me up historical situation yes. now? Yeah, they're like, look, we don't, uh, nothing against you, but, you know, social Darwinism and all these books that I've read have told me you are lesser and I'm not going to associate with you. We've had that poem we read, remember? Kipling's poem that was widely read in Europe? They probably read it in there. Do they even want to associate with this guy? 
Wait, by bringing up this poem, White Men's Burden and Rudolf Kimpling, is that an additional piece of information that is beyond the document? Yes. Yes. Yeah, that they've read it. Okay, so now they don't want to be with him. They don't want to sleep with him. He says, I am sorry. The hatred between Europeans and Indians is increasing instead of decreasing. Many of them thought that they were going to go to this war and they were going to be equal, but are they? No, no but this interaction between them is causing what to increase? The what? Hatred, the irony, right? This was supposed to be a war, a great equalizing war, but is it equalizing? How does this Indian guy feel? Isolated. Isolated. Does he feel disillusioned? He was told this war he was supposed to be what? And now he's in this war, and does he feel it? No. No. Is he going to be resentful when he gets home? And when these soldiers get home, are they going to be towing the lines, yay, Britain, please stay in our country, waving their flag? No. What are they going to be asking for? Give me independence. Give me independence. Do you see how World War I is going to set up the independence movements in these countries because the way the troops were what? Treated. treated. Has it been a long time coming? Yeah. Because in imperialism, weren't they treated bad? Yeah. Yeah. Let's keep on going through this. He says, um, I am sorry the hatred between the Europeans and the Indians is increasing instead of decreasing. I am sure the fault is not with the Indians. Who is he blaming the war on, this hatred? Yeah. Europeans. He says, I am sorry to write this, which is not a hundred part of what is in my mind. But this increasing hatred and continued ill treatment has compelled me to give you a hint. All right? Let's look at the point of view. Positive point of view or negative? Negative, negative point of view of the interaction between humans. So do you all now understand why it was censored? Because if you were reading this about your friend and you got home to you, what would you feel? Angry. Angry. Enraged. Would you join the rebellion? No. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. And what, what is the British, by taking these letters and not letting it get to you at home, what are they trying? They're censoring to prevent what? Rebellion. Rebellion. Because do they want to lose the colonies? No. No, because when the war is over, why are they going to go back to the colonies? They need to replenish all their stocks because they've given all their stuff. Off is there the a world. common trend here? In imperialism and World War I, the Europeans are using their colonies either for their raw materials or their men. And it's because of this debaseness that the colonies feel that they're going to realize they're being used. They're going to realize that the swarm that was supposed to be a great equalizer really did it make them equal. Poor little guy, Bahari, does he feel equal? No. No. But can his friends find out? No. No, because no, what are the British trying to do at all efforts? Stop the rebellion. Stop the rebellion that they know is going to happen after. Hey, it's purpose. What are they doing? Trying to prevent what? The rebellion, so that the colonies, they don't lose their colonies. Who do you think the intended audience is? His friend. His friend, and hopefully his friend would do what Share with this letter? With Share it with other people to make them realize. <coughs> Historical situation. I could talk about social Darwinism, that these guys are being told that they are... They are equals now, but is this guy, is he feeling that burden? Yes, yes. Being in this, he's feeling that white man's burden and how he's seen as a lesser. Mm -hmm. Okay, what time is it? <coughs> okay, so let's go back up to this. I know we didn't have time for study guide, but was this helpful? Yes. Okay, so now my job was to evaluate the extent. Have I started looking at an extent now? Okay, I wanted to look at how the First World War changed the relationship. Was the relationship changed? Mm -hmm. Yes, their relationship changed because now these colonies are going to start to demand after the war what? Freedom. Freedom. Independence. Because what do they feel? Hatred. Resentment. Hey, I didn't hold punch. I'm sorry. Resentment. They don't. Do they feel as equal? 
No. Okay. What we're going to do next.